I was yeah. Yeah. Welcome bike to the studio. I'm joined by my beautiful, gorgeous, downright devilish co-hosts, Max the Animal. I love that move you just pulled. And Judge Sexual Patterson. Bankerson. Whoa. The fourth. Relax. You're only in Bankerson when we're playing Deal and No Deal. Here's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a little uh, different style of show. Basically, Sexy's going to pick three sexy starts of the week. Three se- Not so sexy. Not so sexy sits of the week from any position. And we're going to talk about where they're currently ranked in ECR, according to Fantasy Pros. Me and Animal are then going to agree or disagree on the player, whether or not we think they're a good start based on where they currently are in the rankings. And then, you know, we'll argue a little bit. We'll give examples of guys that are either lower or higher. Like if we disagree that he's a must start, we'll give guys that are ranked behind him that we would start over him and vice versa, et cetera, et cetera. You know how to spell et cetera, by the way? ETC, I believe. That's the abbreviation. It yes. continues. Oh. It's actually a full word. Yeah. ETC et Yeah. Go. That's right. The best I can do. Sexual. Get into it. Get sexy. All right. My first start of the week. At this point, I think he should be an every week start. It's Romeo Dobbs, Green Bay Packers. He's their wide receiver one. He leads the team in targets, catches, yards, yak, everything. Tied for the lead in touchdowns. This guy is. Obviously, I'm not going to compare him to Devontae Adams. Where is he ranked right now? 30 ECR? Second, 30 second. Wide receiver 32. Yes. yes. Now, he just what we've seen in the past two games, he looks like he's the go-to guy in the red zone for Aaron Rodgers. He's the guy he's always going to throw the ball to. He's the guy that's going to try and fill the Devontae Adams yes. role, but obviously he's not going to be able to fill that role because it's a huge role, but he's, gonna, he's the best option there. For sure. So, yeah, at this point, I have no reason to bench him in any league. Yeah, it's a it's a hard agree for me. It's, he's a, like a full time full time snap guy now. It yeah. was like twenty eight, fifty, seventy, and now ninety six last week. Ninety six percent of the snaps. I would start him over. So Alan Lazard is ranked one spot above him. I would start him over Lazard 100%. straight up if I had both. I would start him over Judy if I had Judy. I would start him over Curtis Samuel because that watching the offense I have. a little bit. Woo! Wow. I got another guy on there too. Okay, run it. Terry McLaurin at twenty five. I think it's just a, a matter of. I think you're right. I think no, I would do that, just too. Terry McLaurin, there's too many other guys on that team, whereas Romeo Dobbs is kind of stand out as, like, the guy on Terry's the Terry's ceiling this year kind of feels like what I almost expect from Dobbs right now. Like, yeah. Terry, it feels like yeah. a good game for him. If you put him in your lineup, he goes, like, 5 for 75, you're pumped. But for Dobbs, it's almost like, I feel like he's probably getting there yeah, most weeks now. He needs that and then maybe a touchdown on top of it. It's too spread out in Washington now. Dobbs, exactly. number one guy. It's, it's too spread out on, a, on an offense that's not going to hit every week, which is yeah. which is the real problem there, I think. All right, we like that. We like a little Dobby action here. Sexy, good good stuff. This one might be a little bit more controversial. Going a little deeper here, Rashad White. He's the 43rd ranked running back in ECR. His snap share by week, if you look at it one, weeks one through four, 27%, 13%, 9%, and then last week up to 38%. I think this team doesn't want to use Fournette in a workhorse role they want to have it be a bit of a split backfield and this isn't going to be kind of like a a passing down work role he's going to have more of like a tony pollard to ezekiel elliott type role on this offense he gets entire drives if you you watched last week's game he was out there for an entire drive then fournette would go out there the next drive and maybe fournette again and then back to white so in a matchup where they play the falcons Probably going to be up by quite a bit. Easy to run the ball on them. They're going to throw the ball to him too. I, I like him as a as a decent flex play this week. Yeah, the Falcons is kind of the thing here that really helps me like yeah. this because otherwise it's tough because you just don't really know what kind of usage he's going to get. It's still very. Aren't up in you the worried air. though that that one week usage was because the Chiefs got up by like a zillion points immediately? Yeah. Why would that mean they use him more? Why would they use Rashad White more? Just because he's a pass catching weapon. Like that's a special. Like if it's so a normal, it. it's a normal game. I don't know if I'd call him a pass catching specialist. He's just been like super solid and Tom Brady trusts him a lot. I get I I put properly properly ranked, properly rated for you. I'm not going out of my way to start him. There are a couple guys like I would definitely start him over McKissick. I would start him I think Michael Carter's getting to that range where I might so I have, I Yeah, I might start too. him over. There's not any guys ranked behind him like Madison, Burkhead, Gainwell, Pacheco, Ingram. Like none of those guys I'm gonna start over Shaw White. It was a good it was, uh, it was a good week for sure. He had the season high in snaps, but they do have Godwin probably back close to the full health now. Evans is obviously back from suspension. Julio's back. Um, I don't know. I don't know how how badly they they need him right now. So I don't want to say it was a one week fluke because he didn't really do like a ton. But I could see him getting more and more involved in the passing side of things. For okay. this week, would you rather start Rashad White or Cam Akers? I know it sounds like Rashad White ca- crazy, but yeah. Who does, who does Cam Akers play? Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. exactly. Dallas. Mm. They're due. Obviously, like you know, they, they have Matt Stafford hasn't thrown a touchdown. In two weeks now, like that offense has to get something going. But 
Cam Akers, I just don't know if he's going to be able to do it against Dallas. So that's like, that's a tough one. It feels like they're like trying to force Akers into the into the role that you know they wanted for him for a long time. I think my I think I'm a fucking coward, and I'd still go Acres there yeah, just because I feel more secure with the matchup, workload. Though. Yeah, it is a very tough match. Is it though? Because I'm looking at Fancy Bros. It says running backs perform better than average versus Dallas. Is that really? like? Are we just thinking that Dallas's defense like is because they're good against the pass? And they put a lot of pressure on quarterbacks, and maybe they suck against Could the run possibly. game. Possibly run defense according to PFF grades, they are yeah actually bottom seven. But really? yeah. but pass rush they're number two, coverage they're number six. So yeah, they're like one of those funnel defenses, which we'll talk about a few of those going forward in the episode. But yeah, Dallas awesome against the pass, which that's usually the case. If you have a good pass rush, your coverage grades are going to look fucking mm-hmm. great because your cornerbacks have less to do because yes. quarterback scrambling and making fucking Aaron throws and shit. So um, yeah, I, I'd probably go Acres there. I think I would too now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm go. still going Rashad White. <laughs> yeah. If I, like if I look at the ECR. I think like the ten guys ahead of him, I would I would take Rashad White over all of them. Mike Boone, JD McKissick, Michael Carter, Chase Edmonds, Darrell Henderson, Travis Etienne, Tony Pollard, Cam Akers, Raheem Mostert, yeah, Tyler Algier, Basically, all of those guys. I would except take. for Akers and maybe Etienne this week. I kind of like. I would but. I would yeah I would play any any dude who I feel has like a secure workload. I'm probably playing over Rashad White. Yeah, I think um, Akers has that. Algier has that. I would probably play Tony Pollard this week too. And Travis Etienne, I think, over Rashad White. Yeah, Etienne I'd hate, but I would definitely play him over White this week. Yeah, Houston's going to be a nice, sexy one. What's next? My final sexy start of the week, Josh Reynolds. Now, this one is a little dependent on how the injury report ends up going. It's the only thing. Yeah, that's (laughs) that's, that's not a little, a lot dependent. If Amon Ra doesn't play, then I'm starting Josh Reynolds. Past two weeks, he has 18 targets. He's one of Goff's favorite guys without Amon Ra in there. So I don't see how he could possibly be... 41st in ECR, considering Amon Ra, they're expecting him not to play, I'd assume, at this point. Is that true? Uh, that's that's what I would assume based on, like, practicing. He hasn't well, practiced at all. It's, I mean, we, we only have the Wednesday report, and most and Josh Reynolds didn't practice on Wednesday. So that's, I think That's fair. I think the report was, uh, I saw from someone tweet, uh, injury update, DJ Chark, Amon Ra, Josh Reynolds, Quintus Cephas, DeAndre Swift, TJ Hawkinson. None of them practiced okay. on Wednesday. So I don't think we have a clear picture of that. The only way I'm playing Josh Reynolds is if, well, I think we pretty much know Swift is out. Uh, Amon Ra for sure has to be out. Yeah. I'm going to be honest, dude. I actually kind of like DJ Chark in this offense. Um, you like him over Reynolds? Uh, give me Reynolds all day. He's got the golf history. They're, yeah. they're on the team before. Depends. He knows him. They're buddies. Do you know before uh, before week three, I was going to drop the stat last week, but I couldn't because he didn't end up playing. And I guess the severity of Chark's injury matters. But, like, DJ Chark ranked third in the NFL in unrealized air yards going really? into last week. Like, he was getting a ton of fucking deep targets That's from Jared Goff. That's always been who he is. He's just a stretch the field guy and chuck it deep. Yeah, but if Goff has no one else to throw to, like, give me those fucking That's That's shots. why, though, if if Chark does play but Amon Ra doesn't, I like Reynolds more than Chark because he Reynolds will take more targets. of the Amon Ra role. Yeah, It'd kind of be targets. a coin flip for me, to be honest. Yeah, I wouldn't mind either the, of them. The big thing with Chark is you're kind of hoping for that big play is where Reynolds is going to get, like, 11 targets. Yeah. Remember when D... DJ Chark like blasted off for a second in Jacksonville and looked like the next big receiver. Yeah, that was fun times. It's like two games and then he's dead. That was like a year. He had a whole he had a great season, like a thousand yard season. Mm-hmm. Oh really? Yeah, he had like a that. zero yard rookie year and then like a thousand yard sophomore year. He had a great season. Very odd. And they were, he had like a some I feel like that's nice, everybody in Jacksonville. Pretty monster. I mean, yeah, like there every just, single player. Like Allen Robinson was a stud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was a, who's the other guy? Never been the same. Yeah. Oh, I can't remember his name. There was that one guy who had a great season. Justin Blackman. Chanel. No, not that guy. Not <laughs> yeah, really Justin same. Blackman, maybe? He was really good, but he's just gotten in trouble. I feel like, yeah, they have always had, like, random wide receivers pop. Even, like, Marvin Jones had yeah. big-ass seasons there. Fuck, I hate that I can't remember his name. I feel even Marvin Jones is disrespectful. Marvin Jones has been a goat for a while. What are you talking about? I, I need to find a guy. Doriel Green Beckham. No, he was on the Eagles. Uh, oh, Marquise Lee, D.D. Westbrook. Those kind of guys. Well, they bombs. never really had Keelan big, Cole. That they was, never, yeah, Keelan yeah, Cole. Bombs. I feel like all of them had like that time where they were like the hyped guy in Jacksonville. Yeah, I was big on. Um, I don't ever bucks. get over like seven. Fuck was the second guy you just said? D.D. Westbrook. I was yeah. a big D.D. Westbrook guy one year. <laughs> Didn't work out. I think it was the year he got hurt like week two or something. Damn, Alan, oh, Allen Robinson, the year he went to for 1,400 and 40, 14 touchdowns. Alan Hearns also went for a yes, thousand, that's Hearns, a thousand and ten yards. I was, so, I, I remember being so excited about Alan Hearns the next year. <laughs> I was like, he's a, a beast, goat, dude. solidified wide receiver two in fantasy. I'm pretty sure he had like twelve he's yards. Terrible. Next year. All right, move to sits. It's this not so sexy sits of the week. First guy, you might, you might be considering you have to put him in every week, but DJ Moore this week 
is an absolute sit. I love this. The Panthers play the 49ers this week. And the 49ers defense has been absolutely lethal for fantasy this year. They allow the least pass yards per game out of any defense in the league at 143. And the Panthers have the least pass yards per game, the fourth least pass yards per game at 208. Baker Mayfield is not going to be able to do anything against 49ers. It's going to be sad. Yeah. It's going to be absolutely brutal. Is he, is he, he leads the league, so I'm sure he's going to attack on a few more. Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I love this so much because I'm an, I'm an avid DJ Moore hater since uh, I drafted him this year, believing in him again. I've got a guy in here. It's, it's just, this is just straight disrespect <laughs> at this point. But I would start Nico Collins, <laughs> wide receiver Nico 60 Collins. this week, over DJ Moore. He's just getting – I mean, look, it's it's a mashup where I think that the Texans and the Jaguars are actually going to just have a kind of a shootout. And uh, I expect Nico Collins to get involved. He's been getting sneaky, you know, five to seven targets a game. You love Nico. It's, He's a big body you guy. mentioned him in the office at least like three times this it's, week. It's Brandon Cooks and then it's Nico Collins. So when Brandon Cooks is, you know, getting bodied, you got to go to Nico Collins. He's the big dude out a nice there. matchup. Good red zone target. Uh, it's yeah. a matchup play, and it's also a disrespect play. This is you know, fair. I'm try- you got to go above and beyond when you hate a dude. Yeah, I'm trying to disrespect yeah. DJ Moore. I thought the Moore sit was pretty obvious, to be honest. He's, like, done nothing this year. San Francisco passed. He's fucking awesome. I saw a stat somewhere today that was said uh, – I just copied it. The DJ Moore ranks 67th out of 73 wide receivers in catchable targets. 62.1% of his uh, targets so far this year have been catchable. And his average depth of those targets is 7.4 yards, Jeez. which is really, really... That's brutal. So it just means Baker's been... Horrible. Terrible. Straight buns. Somehow yeah. worse than Sam Darnold and Kyle Allen. I don't understand what happened to him. I feel like at one point he was like an accurate quarterback. No? No, he was only good against bad teams. He, remember he was... Yeah, the guy that I like, do remember that kind he, of... Like, he, they looked at all his wins and it was like, oh, he's against yeah. a team that was below 500. And then as soon as he played a team that was above 500, he melted. He also had a great team around him. And Offensive line it. was incredible. And he was terrible. Yeah. And her, Every, everyone was just waiting for Chubb to get the ball. So let Baker do whatever. How much he better wants. Cleveland is with Jacoby Brissett yeah. than Baker Mayfield. Exactly. It's actually insane. They they like low key could should be four 0 Like Deshaun Watson might Browns have, are a very good team. Yeah, yeah. They might they might have like a fucking seven and four record by the time Deshaun Watson gets on the field. Yeah. It's See gonna it. be gross. Yeah. DJ Moore, easy sit. I've got a decision in the league. DJ Moore or Tyler Boyd, and I feel like it's too obvious to go Boyd. Boyd. I'd yeah. probably go with Boyd too. Yeah. All right, next one. I know Animal hates this one. Tyler Algier. He's 33rd in ECR. The Falcons play the Bucs this week. Very difficult matchup. If you look at who the running backs who have played against the Bucs this year, in week one, Zeke, he only had 5.4 points. Pollard, 3.2. In week two, Kamara didn't play for the Saints, but Ingram had 5.1. And in week three, Aaron Jones, 4.2 points. AJ Dillon, 4.8. Obviously, in week four, Clyde and Pacheco ran all over him. But the Falcons' offense is not the Chiefs' offense. They're definitely going to be in the same category as all the other guys. And I see absolutely no way Tyler Algier comes up with a double-digit point week this week. I feel like his... um, I'm definitely nervous about... I'd be nervous about Algier in this matchup if Caleb Huntley wasn't there. And the fact that Caleb Huntley is there makes me even more nervous because I feel like he's going to get goal line work. I think Algier will be the early down guy. I think he'll get targets as well. Here's what's going to happen. I think he's going to finish... He's going to have a shit game, but he's going to finish with, like, 11 points because he caught, like, four passes for 42 yards and, you know, maybe got a goal line score or some shit like that. So I feel like on paper this is a really tough matchup, but I won't hate having Algier in my flex this week. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i a big – listen, anytime you can get a, a starting a running back off the waiver wire, uh, I'm, I'm all about that. So the fact that he's a starting running back, yeah, he might not be on the best team. Yeah, he might have a tough matchup. But I got I – got, I'm looking at James Conner, who's the – RB21, who hasn't done shit all year. And I don't know why he's still ranked that high other than the fact that he had a good season last year with a lot of touchdowns. Give me Tyler Algier over fucking James Conner. I'll play Algier over Gibson, who's ahead of him. Possibly A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon's Been, starting to be ranked susly high, yeah. He, he had a good, you know, he got a good volume last week. He got like 17 carries. But this week it's going to be, I feel like it's just going to be a low-scoring game against the Giants. No one's going to be able to get anything done. No one's going to be able to move the ball. Um, and A.J. Dillon, I just don't know if he's going to get involved at all. Yeah, I, I, I think Tyler Algier is okay. I'm not going to hate it. I, I don't see any – like, do you think he's actually going to get involved in the passing game that much? He gets four receptions? If, I, if you look at even – Maybe Patterson, not. That might be dramatic just because Mariota doesn't throw the ball that yeah. much overall, but – Patterson has 28 receiving yards on the year. Like, um, yeah, they don't, they don't use him in the receiving game. It's so why weird. would they use Tyler Algier? That's what I'm just saying. Because they're fucking weird when it comes to Cordy P. They're just like, you are – Jerome Bettis, <laughs> and you will act accordingly. That's like yeah. what their meetings have to be like. Uh, yeah, no, listen, I th- thinking about it out loud, like Mariota doesn't dump, he just doesn't throw the ball often. They throw the ball like 22 times a game. 
fucking nine of them are going to London. Seven of them are going to Kyle Pitts. Doesn't leave a lot for the running backs. I just, I don't know. This feels like a game where everybody's going to be so, just going to be repeating the same thing. It's Tyler Algier, not a good offense, playing against a really good defense. And that feels like a, a sign to play Tyler Algier. Yeah, I, 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 anytime you, the NFL gives you those signs where you're like, oh, it's it's a easy, it's a lock, you know, just fade that always. Always go against it. You know you shouldn't you fade, Animal? It. Pristine Auction. Pristine Auction has hundreds, probably thousands, maybe a billion pieces of memorabilia up on their website, autographed for you. Helmets, hats, jerseys, footballs, whatever sport, baseballs. The Aaron Judge dude might put his fucking ball up on Pristine Auction. I heard that. Uh, do you hear the value of that thing? What? Oh, the Aaron Judge ball? The 60 second ball? No, I'm sure it's in the middle of the scene. Yeah, me either. I was asking. <laughs> I thought I had it, and then I forgot that was like it. two million. I don't know. Yeah, it's something insane like that. They are giving away an OBJ signed Super Bowl helmet right there. It's a nice silver mat. It's beautiful on the orange helmet. Free giveaway. Literally, if you go to Pristine Auction, use the link down below. Use promo code BDG when you get on there. They're going to give you ten dollars to use towards your first purchase on there towards any piece of memorabilia but you don't even have to make a purchase in order to get into the free giveaway so odell beckham jr signed super bowl helmet for you bdge on pristine auction go check out the other auctions raffles that kind of stuff they got on the website right now bike to it um i just want to take back the uh, james connor statement after looking for the philadelphia <laughs> also is one of those teams that their defense is good but it's much better against the pass and then it is the run so, uh, so what Joe Connor, Connor is Elcher. trying to do, yeah. So I think I'm gonna Connor's scoring a touchdown. He hasn't scored one. You yet. have to think he's due for. A you touchdown. have to think he's gonna score a touchdown. So I scratched the James Connor, <laughs> race that. Don't even comment. Just <laughs> hold your comment. And then, uh, all right, last guy. All right, my last guy. <laughs> maybe the most controversial one so far. It's Deontay Johnson. He's ranked 24th in ECR, the highest ranking so far. Buffalo allows the second least pass yards per game after the 49ers. And if you look at what happened. After Kenny Pickett came in the game last week, the target funnel was very much so focused towards George Pickens and Pat Fryermuth. Both of them had a 33% target share. Deontay Johnson only down at 16%. Obviously, very small sample size, but in his first full game with Pickett against one of the best defenses in the league, I have no interest in starting Deontay Johnson this week. Buffalo's been very great against top wide receivers too. If you look at like the past few weeks, Tyreek Hill only had 4.3 points, Bateman 3.2. Robert Woods, 5.9. I don't see a good week for Deontay this week. I mean, I agree. I don't think this one's even that controversial. I think, uh, I think so. No. I actually disagree more than I agree, I think. Really? Just based Let's on, hear this. Yeah, well, listen, I think uh, it's going to be really interesting because you go look at the small sample size. It seems like coming off the big game, Kenny Pickett has one game, right? The, yeah. the big playmakers in it were Pickens and Pat Fryermuth. I just, okay, so the game script is, is what gets me. I think the Bills are favored by 14 points, right? They're going to get ahead big time. I think the entire second half is just going to be throws. And, like, who's the guy that separates really quickly at the line of script? I feel like Deontay Johnson might catch five to six balls in the second half alone. I think he'll end up having a decently good game. He's not a type of guy that goes without – he doesn't go long stretches with bad games. You know what I mean? Like Deontay yeah. Johnson's the guy who separates, gets open, and even if his bad game might be like five for 40 or something like that, I feel like the next game is always eight catches, nine catches, ten catches, something like that. You don't you don't hold a guy like Deontay Johnson down for too long. So I, I would just caution going against like the small sample size of what happened last week against a dude like Deontay. I didn't like him when Trubisky was playing. He was a guy that was like completely fading going yeah, into the year. Trubisky can't throw. Yeah, I just I, I think Deontay Johnson's just in a better situation now with Kenny Pickett when you look at it like objectively starting over from game one. They have their week to prepare and Pickett's not going in at a halftime. So I while the matchup is horrible, I he might have like fucking two catches in the first half, if that. I think the entire second half is just gonna be pure catch up mode. So what about like if I look at some of the guys behind him, like Terry McLaurin, who are you starting you starting him over? I would start Deontay. What about Tyler Lockett? I would start Deontay over Brandon Cooks. I would start Lockett over him. Yeah, I would start Lockett. I would over start Devonta Smith yeah. over him, too. I have Devonta Samuel. Smith, and I have even his own teammate, George Pickens. You would take Pickens over Deontay? See, I wouldn't do that. I think I would. Just the way he's been trending week to Feels week. blasphemous. I know it was with Trubisky, but. I don't know. I wouldn't want to start either of them. Let me see what about, about Romeo Dobbs? That's a good one. Um, I might take Dobbs. Dobbs is just, like, criminally low rated yeah. Yeah. on this. I, I would. I think I would play Dobbs over Deontay. But I would play Deontay over Brandon Cooks, who's ahead of him. Uh, probably, maybe not Amari Cooper. But I, I just I don't think he's an auto sit for me. I think he's a guy that if I have, I'm probably trying to get into my lineup this week. Okay. I guess, yeah, it d- does depend how deep you are. But Yeah, not everyone has that luxury to just yeah. sit Deontay Johnson. <laughs> you might be forced to do it, but 
I would hate it. Uh, that was all the sits Damn. that I had. But there was one other guy I kind of wanted to talk about. Olave at 19. Kyle Pitts. He is ninth in ECR right now. But if you look at it's all just the... Like, how dare you bring up Kyle Pitts. fucking assholes. In my presence. <laughs> Honestly, I, I found 12 tight ends I'd rather start over Kyle Pitts this it, week. Easily. Look at Pitts at number nine. Pat Frymuth behind him. I'd start him. Gerald yeah. Everett over him. Yeah, and Joe Start him. Yes. Joku, yeah, probably. Higby, mean, Schultz, I saw uh, Laquan Hertz. Jones, a uh, big fan. Higby's yeah. ahead of him, yeah. You know, remember LQ? He mm-hmm. saw so they shouted him out, a uh, nice stat on NFL Network. David and Joku's game against the Chargers was like 7 for 75. Like, he just had all these monster games against the Chargers. Start in Joku this week. I'm in on a Joku. You have to be. And Gerald Everett. He did get banged up, though, didn't he? Don't don't worry about it. He's fine. <laughs> he Everybody's fucking up. fine. He's fine. It's NFL would you start Tyler Conklin up. over uh, Pitts? I would ooh. start Evan Ingram over him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. I would. I'm 100% serious in this matchup, too, against Houston. Absolutely. Tyler Conklin was, like, awesome, and then Zach Wilson came in yeah. and he had the bad game. So now I'm like, oh, am I going to into the uh, – actually, he wasn't terrible. Three of five, Three 52 50. yards. Better than what Kyle Pitts typically puts up. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just not a, good, not a good look for Pitts anywhere. Just the fact that he keeps holding on to these top ten rankings is He's just – He's also got a hamstring injury who hits pits yeah, yeah he's gonna go out there and like suck and then take like two snaps and just walk off the field he's done he's just done with his team i think he's his think career's he's, over right. i think, he's, I think he doesn't want to be a falcon anymore he's 20 he, years old yeah it's a shame that they shut up his career that fast <laughs> idiot it's arthur smith's fault start will disley over him wow i i would too i'm starting him in the bash <laughs> who are you starting in bash um that's a great question i have austin hooper as my backup which yeah. is, who are you starting hooper isn't or great um Definitely. I'm trying to actually, I believe I put in a waiver for someone. Hayden Hurst, maybe? I feel like he was still available, which was unbelievable. Really? In the bash? Yeah, I don't know if that's true. I could have lied. Would you start him over Pitts? Who should I start a defense this week? What are your options? Have the Vikings at home versus Chicago. Love that. Miami at New York Jets. Was Titans at that. Washington. New Orleans at home versus the Saints, or uh, versus the uh, Seahawks. Hayden Hurst. I think I like Vikings the most there. Home matchup against the Bears. What about KC? At home versus the Raiders. I feel like they've been kind of low key good. I don't know. Chiefs. <laughs> I know I know their run defense has been really good. Yeah, that's I need to know if their pass but rush like, is good. But like if there's more a lot of points and their pass rush is fire, then like that's a really good fantasy combo. I think I'm gonna take the bikes, I guess. It's gonna be a big Devontae Adams week, I think. Say that every week now. Never is. <laughs> Staying there for five weeks. He actually had a great game against Denver. Never really yeah, he's had a couple good games. Week one was insane. I was like, oh, fuck, he's going to be the overall number one player <laughs> in fucking NFL. Any parting words? Any hot takes this week, Emily, or start sits? <laughs> All right, yes, yeah, two real quick. One hot take each. How about we do a hot take for Thursday Night Football's game? Okay. All right, I like that. That way people already know. All right, we're going to give a hot take for, thurs- uh, for Thursday Night Football. We film this on Thursday afternoon, thus whatever we say is... We're either Nostradamus's or just Domus's. I don't know. I don't even know what that means. I don't know either. <laughs> Nostradamus is like you could tell the future, right? I think we're yes, sure. Uh, I think we're going to see an all-time bad performance out of Matt Ryan tonight. I think we're going to see nail the two thirty under passing yards for him. The Broncos, they're kind of like funnel as well. They're not great against the run, but they're awesome against the pass. But the Colts are without Jonathan Taylor, so I don't know how effective the run game is going to be. So it's going to be like Matt Ryan relying on Michael Pittman, who's going to be probably getting shadow coverage from Sertain and. I just don't see a way that they move the ball down the field. Unless Mo Ali Cox goes full. Full Cox. Full Full Cox. I was going to say ejaculation, but I wanted to keep it PG for sexy kids out there. Good call. Yeah, uh, Molly Cox. Uh, unless he goes for like 150 and two touchdowns, I don't, I don't, I don't see it out of the Colts and Matt Ryan tonight. I think it's gonna be a disaster. I think both teams combined for less than 100 rush yards. I think there's gonna be no rushing the ball at all in this game. Every single running back bench them. I love, all busts. I love a lot of passing because you know what mine is. Russell Wilson is gonna throw four passing touchdowns wow. tonight because he hasn't done shit all season, and if he doesn't start doing shit now, I'm going to freak the fuck out. Yeah, this doesn't feel like you believe it. You're just No, I believe it, because here's the deal. We lost Javonta Williams. We can't trust Melvin Gordon to hold on to the ball. Mike Boone can't catch. Like... Tavius Murray. He's, he's not ready tonight? yet. It's, it's Thursday. Like he's, the guy's got a stretch. I feel like, like Melvin's low-key going to go nuts. I feel like Melvin's going to go like 15 for 115 and touchdown, and everyone's going to be like, oh, we were so stupid to think it wasn't his backfield. It wasn't Mike Boone's turn. It's Melvin's season. Well, it's obviously Melvin over everyone else in that backfield, but what I'm saying tonight is just all Russ. Four touchdowns, four passing touchdowns. Like he's never done it before. You know, He's going to show people like, hey, sure. I'm Russell Wilson. <laughs> I can play football still. Four touchdowns. Book it. Okay. Four picks. Four picks, four touchdowns. That'll probably get the job. Same thing in my book. (laughs) (laughs) All right. uh, That's all we got for today. Good luck this weekend. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you hit Pristine Auction. Go follow the link down below. Promo code BDG when you get on there. $10 towards your first deposit. Also automatically entered into the free OBJ signed helmet raffle. 
Toot.